Well, first of all, I'll say huge, massive congratulations on the film. I was so overwhelmed oh, uh, by it yesterday. I think the press screening that we were in, I think everyone was pretty overwhelmed. Oh, great. That's by so it. good and to hear. <laughs> everyone had to kind of stay in their seats afterwards because they were quite, they were kind of, you know, contemplating everything. Uh, I wanted to start by asking uh, about the, the ghost image. Yeah. Because uh, when I first saw the poster, it's obviously got that kind of, I remember when I was a kid that it was kind of a, a goofy way to, to scare yeah. people, cutting your eyes out. But for you as a writer and a director, I mean, that image, what was it about that that you thought this would make, in terms of a serious film, that this would make a, a great starting point? It's funny, it started off as a joke. I had this <laughs> idea, like, I was like, what if we made a haunted house movie, like, or a, a horror film, like The Conjuring, a traditional ghost movie, but where the ghost is just a guy in a sheet and you see him all the time. And so it really did begin as a joke. I had the idea a couple of years ago. And it just always kind of hung around in my head. But I've always loved ghosts, for one thing. And also the imagery of a ghost in a sheet. Um, the very first movie I made when I was seven years old uh, was a ghost movie with my brothers draped in a sheet. So it kind of was a long-standing thing. And uh, I love taking iconography and, and utilizing it in an unexpected way. And so I love the fact that this image of a guy wearing a sheet with two eyes cut out is almost universal. Like you show that to anybody and they're like, oh, it's a ghost. And you don't really think about it in terms of like, you know, if you just see a drawing of it, you instantly just associate that with a ghost without thinking of it in terms of a costume. But then you take a, the costume and actually put it on and it becomes something goofy. And I was like, I wonder if we could figure out a way to make this not goofy and make it actually something beautiful and ethereal and as, as haunting as, you know, a, a special effects ghost might be. And, uh, the idea for the film kind of like, you know, springboarded from that, from that the idea of doing something goofy. It, it took a turn into doing something serious and and wrapped itself up with a couple of different ideas. But it all began with just that, that imagery of like the idea of like taking something that's goofy, but yet so universal and seeing if we could do something really interesting with it. Of all the projects you made, I mean, I loved your, your previous film, Making Body Saints oh, thank and you. Peach Dragon as well. Um, was this the most difficult thing you've written, or was this, was this kind of easier than the other films that you've been involved with before? I intended it to be easy, because I, we, we were finishing Pete's Dragon when I wrote it. The script I wrote almost in, you know, it's a 30-page script. You know, as, there's not much dialogue in there. And so I thought it would be really easy to make, and, I, and I, I knew that this, you know, we'd finish Pete's Dragon at a certain date, and then it was gonna open like two months later, and I was like, I wonder if I could make a movie in that time period and had this idea and, and started to pursue it and thought it would just be a, a, an easy, I thought it was gonna be my vacation, so to speak. <laughs> it ended up being incredibly hard. I have a lot more gray in my beard now, thanks to this film. Um, but at the same time, it was incredibly liberating. But it, yeah, it was, it, was, it was tricky. I think last time I saw you on an interview, you had an amazing mustache. Oh, my, yeah, <laughs> I changed my facial hair on it. Every, every movie, it changes. <laughs> um, one of the other things as well coming out of the screening was, uh, obviously everyone was talking about it, but they all took away very, very different things. With, obviously, in the film, you talk about love and loss and yeah. life and everything else. Everyone took different things away. I mean, I somehow gravitated to my grandparents. I don't know why. Um, but are you happy that people are watching the film, they've seen it so far, and are taking various different things away from the film? I'm over the moon about it. I'm ecstatic about it. When I was making the film, I had a very... I don't want to say specific, but I had a very clear idea of like kind of what I was going for with it. And I didn't know if it would resonate with anybody else. I didn't know if the movie would work. I, I was like constantly terrified every single day that it would just be dumb. Like that the, that the idea of a guy wearing a sheet would not work. Um, but so the fact that people enjoy the film or are, you know, um, that they find it provocative or, you know, intellectually stimulating or emotionally stimulating is really great to me because I, I just wasn't sure. I knew it meant something to me, but I wasn't sure if what was meaningful to me would matter to anybody else. And so that, that it does is wonderful. And that the reactions are so varied is also beautiful. I love that people are able to get so much out of it and so many different reactions, so many different associations, so many different emotions are coming from, from the, these screenings. And it really means a lot to me because it just makes me feel a little, a little more in touch with the rest of the world, I suppose. <laughs> Was it, obviously you, you shot on, I, I, I'm guessing you shot on film and obviously in that wonderful kind of letterbox thing. After you did a, a big kind of, kind of ensconcing movie like Peach Dragon, which is very visually, you know, a lot of yeah. visuals going on. Was that something that you wanted to do to go back to kind of, I guess, you know, that, that kind of filmmaking, if you like? I wanted to feel handmade. That was the idea. I wanted to make something that felt completely just, you know, uh, personal and like where you could see like 
are fingerprints all over it. I love that type of filmmaking where you feel like someone is just, you know, sewn a like sewn a quilt. That's what I, the the thing I always think about is like is like can we make a movie feel like something that we we sew together? Um, we actually did shoot it digitally because I just knew that those takes were going to last a long time and that we'd run out of money really quickly if we shot on film. But we did our best to make it look as organic as we could. And then the aspect ratio was something that I've always wanted to do. I love that aspect ratio. I wanted to see if I could shoot a movie in it. I knew that uh, Disney would not ever be wanting to make a movie in 133. So this was this might be my only chance to do it. And so we went for it. And it was, it was way more challenging than I thought it would be because uh, you know, our brains are now trained to think in widescreen. So having to like think about how to compose an image in a square was pretty tough, uh, unexpectedly so. But I did. I wanted to. I wanted it to be simple. I wanted to make something that was very simple, that had as few shots as possible, had as few cuts as possible, and was uh, was had an austerity that would allow me to make it personal. You know, like I love long silences, and I knew that this was a movie that would benefit from them, and so I just jumped in all the way in terms of like taking advantage of the fact that I was making this for myself and could do that. Uh, you also had Casey and Rooney and <coughs> Ain't Nobody Saints who were mm-hmm. wonderful together. I mean, it must have been great to have them together. Was it always the plan to have them part of this movie? Not necessarily. I mean, again, it came together so quickly that there wasn't really a plan <laughs> beforehand. Like I kind of wrote the script and then the next week we were like, okay, let's make this. And then two weeks later we were scouting locations and shortly after that we were shooting. And this was all done on the weekends while we were finishing Pete's Dragon. So I basically, I wasn't sure if they would go for it, but I thought it'd be cool to have them in it. Uh, it would be a nice touchstone, a nice reference to our past work together. There'd be a sort of like meta continuity from the last film to this one if they were there together. And they both agreed to do it. I think they, you know, both were just excited to do something so strange and unusual and so, so, so off the beaten path and also in secret. Like we didn't tell anybody we were making this movie. We just went off and did it. And, uh, and I knew that their chemistry was wonderful. I knew that from Made in the Body Saints. And the script for this wasn't particularly emotional. Like there wasn't a lot of like, you know, detail for their characters. You know, they, they didn't even have names. They were referred to as CNM in the credits. And uh, I knew that they would turn the movie into a love story, even though it wasn't written as such, because that's what their their chemistry is just so strong together. And they have such limited screen time while Casey looks like Casey that I wanted to make sure that it made an impact and uh, and sure enough they did. I just find out obviously this was you made Pete's Dragon and then come back to this again are you looking to go back into another kind of big movie or are you just uh, just picking them as, as you go? I don't know I mean I just wrapped another one that was uh, we finished shooting two weeks ago that again with Casey in it and uh, it was bigger than bigger than this by, by and bigger than Ain't the Mighty Saints, but smaller than Pete's Dragon. So I kind of just take them as they come, like whatever feels right. Like that's what matters to me. It's like, it's gotta feel right. The process of making them feels exactly the same. Like, you know, Pete's Dragon took longer to make, but on a day-to-day basis, it felt exactly the same as making a ghost story. The Old Man, the Gun is when we just finished, that felt the same as well. We work with the same people over and over again. So you kind of just have a family that just you take around and make movies with. and. <laughs> And so it doesn't matter how big they are or what the budget is, it just has to feel right creatively. And, and if, if it feels right, then I just jump right in. Well, I absolutely love this one. Thank you so much for your time. Great, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.